Welcome into a new season of the Believe in Patriots podcast right here on the Believe Podcast Network, kicking off season number two. And for for season two, episode one, we're just going right to the good stuff. We're days away from opening day. We are right here now behind enemy lines, getting the scoop on the Pats week one opponent, the Miami Dolphins, and joining us now from the Perfectville podcast, which is the Dolphins podcast right here on the Believe Podcast Network. It's host Sam Marku. Sam, we've had some technical difficulties getting ready here. So uh, can you hear me and can you speak? I can hear you and hopefully you can hear me speak. And, I do uh, hear you. Hopefully That's this good. is not a sign of uh, things to come for our teams, huh? Yeah, absolutely. So um, look, we get it. Dolphins fans hate the Patriots. Patriots fans don't hate the Dolphins as much because by and large, the Dolphins haven't been that good over the last 20 years. So uh Pat, you know, Dolphins hate the Pats. How do they feel coming into week one, coming into this season? Yeah, I think coming into the season, the overall feeling is that the Miami Dolphins, uh, at least from the fan base, the expectation is the playoffs. You know, they went 10-6 and six last year, beat the Patriots. I know you said we haven't been that good. We tend to beat the Patriots every yes. single year. Not yes. sure why that happens, but it happens. Um, and personally, the Patriots aren't the team I hate the most in the AFC East. It's actually the Buffalo Bills. That's the mm -hmm. team that I grew up hating because Jim Kelly, Thurman Thomas, James Lofton, Andre Reid, Daryl Talley, Bruce Smith, all those guys just ruined my childhood. So the Patriots weren't that team up until the 2000s. But for the most part, you are right. Most of the Dolphins fan base hates the Patriots with a passion. Um, <clears throat> but the fan base this year is feeling pretty optimistic. We are really, really high on Tua Tunga Vailoa, despite what the national media says. Uh, we love our wide receivers. We love our defense. It's one of the best defenses in the league. And we're going up against a rookie quarterback for the New England Patriots here on Sunday. So it's pretty optimistic on our side of the fence for week one. I actually want to talk to you about the quarterback situation, but not this year's quarterback situation. I want to talk about last year's quarterback situation for you guys, because I think that this year's Patriots are kind of in a similar situation to last year's Dolphins. I would have, if I were the Pats, kept Cam Newton and started Cam Newton much in the way that the Dolphins kept Ryan Fitzpatrick and started Ryan Fitzpatrick last year. Now, I didn't agree with the Dolphins going away from Fitzpatrick at the time that they did, but did you like the idea of having the veteran bridge quarterback, or did you immediately want to give it to the young kid? Well, <clears throat> I was fine with Tua taking over. It took us a little bit by surprise when he actually was named the starter after we beat the Jets. He had come in for some cleanup duty just to get some actual game time experience. And then next thing you know, he was the starter. Um, but Tua and Mac Jones are in two different areas for their rookie season. Tua is coming off a devastating hip injury, no training camp, no preseason games, didn't get to meet with any of his teammates prior to the season starting last year. It was all virtual. It was all, you know, Zoom meetings and things of that nature. Really, really brief walkthroughs. Wasn't a lot of time to develop chemistry. So I agreed with Ryan Fitzpatrick being the starting quarterback. Personally, I think he should have been the starting quarterback a little bit longer, but the decision was made. And once they made that decision, the, you know, the wheels kept turning right there. I'm surprised that Cam Newton is not on the New England Patriots right now. That shocked me. I heard his comments a little bit earlier today about yeah. how he couldn't be on the team because he would have been a quote unquote distraction because that's his blessing and his curse, whatever that means. Personally, this is what I would have thought the Patriots would have done. And it would have made so much sense for so many different reasons. Ryan Fitzpatrick was a free agent. If you knew you're not going to go to Cam Newton and you have a rookie quarterback, I don't know if Ryan Fitzpatrick wants to be in that situation yet again, but the Patriots are the only team in really the NFL that the Ryan Fitzpatrick hasn't played for. <laughs> it would have been fantastic for him to complete the AFC East sweep, be a starting quarterback for the Patriots for a number of games or a season, let Mac Jones sit behind and learn a little bit behind Ryan Fitzpatrick, which is never a bad thing. But we are where we are. We got two Alabama quarterbacks going head to head, friends, former teammates. Uh, I'm excited for it. I'm thinking this is going to be a low-scoring, ugly game. Like, I think this is going to be a game filled with a lot of punts, and it's going to be defense first, two young quarterbacks that are going to get taken advantage of at times. Like, th this game being 16-14 would not shock me in either direction. How do you see it? No, I, I see it being a little bit of a higher scoring game than that, but I think it'll happen in the second half of the game. I agree with you. I think the first half of this game is going to be a little bit of a slog. Uh, you've got two really, really good defensive front sevens. Uh, you've got two teams that are obviously very familiar with their, with each other. You guys have former Dolphins players. We have former Patriots yeah. players. We have former Patriots coaches. You have former Dolphins coaches. It's, they know each other like the back of their hand. I think what ultimately is going to end up needing to happen for either team to really get out in front of the other is they're going to have to solve um, 
really a couple things that'll come through in the first half of the game. And I don't know what those are yet, but I'll be honest with you. The Patriots wide receiving core doesn't scare me. Um, the tight ends scare me, yeah. but the, the, the Miami dolphins have, I think better talent when it comes to wide receivers and they have a really good tight end, but their offensive line isn't very good. And you guys have a front defensive seven. That's fantastic. Uh, neither run game is anything to write home about right now, at least on paper. So I agree with you. I think early, it's going to be a lot of punts. It may come down to a turnover or a mistake, a fumble, something like that, that really turns the tide. But I do see this game opening up a little bit in the second half. Bill Belichick, regardless of what we think about him here in South Feet and South Florida, is a really, really good in-game manager. Brian Flores has shown that he can scheme up for a second half of a game. So I do expect a little bit more scoring in the second half than the first, but I, I totally agree with your sentiment. I could see this being a very, very close game. I mean, last season opening week, it wasn't a high-scoring affair either yeah. with Cam Newton. It was a lot of running on the ground. Cam Newton actually almost had like 200 yards on the, on the ground himself. Um, the offense for the Dolphins wasn't as potent as it could, could potentially be now. Um, so I do see it being a little bit of a higher scoring game, but if it was in the teens, wouldn't surprise me one bit. Nothing about the Dolphins offense scares me other than Jalen Waddell. This is the guy that I'm afraid of. Now the Patriots don't have Stephon Gilmore. Jalen Mills was on the injury report yesterday. He did practice today. He looks like he'll be a go. I don't know if he'll be limited or not, but nonetheless, the Pats secondary depth is not what we're used to here. Waddle is the guy who scares me. Am I justified in that uh, in that being scared? I think Jalen Waddle is has the ability and potential to be a very exciting rookie for the Miami Dolphins and the league in general. I think you're right to be concerned about him and zero in on him. One of the things that we always talk about on our podcast when we're talking about the Patriots is that Bill Belichick tends to take away the best player on offense. That's what he seems to focus on, at least from what we see. He goes, that's their best player. I'm going to mitigate that, and I'm going to take my chances elsewhere. Uh, Jalen Waddell isn't the best player on the Miami Dolphins offense right now. That probably belongs to Mike Gesicki. Uh, Mike Gesicki is a fantastic tight end. He's a guy that I think most people are starting to catch on to in terms of being a very, very good weapon. Um, he's going to have a fantastic season. 12 personnel, so two tight ends, something you guys are familiar with yep. this year in particular, is – by far and away, Tua Tungavailoa's best offensive formation in terms of if you look at his stats. You're going to see a lot of tight end sets. You're going to see a lot of dump offs to Miles Gaskin and let him go make some playmaking um, you know, moves in the, in the open field if he has the ability to. But ultimately, yeah, I think Jalen Waddell throughout this season, you're going to see him progress. I think he's going to be a rookie that's better than advertised. I don't know if it happens in week one. I hope it does. But uh, you'd be right to uh, zero in on him because he's got a lot of talent. We'll see how he uh, turns that into actual stats. If I could boil this key down to one thing for the Patriots, I would say it probably comes down to this. I think it's going to come down to tackling in the open field because, and the reason why I say that is, we know the Dolphins' offensive line isn't as good, and we know that Austin Jackson's likely not going to play because of the COVID stuff. So I think the Pats use that front seven to try to generate pressure, get the ball out of two of his hands quickly, by all accounts, he's smart and accurate enough to do that, yep. and then it's going to come down to the fact of, can the Patriots make tackles in the open field? Because if Tua throws a two-yard pass to Gaskin and gets tackled at two yards, Patriots win the game. If that two-yard pass becomes eight yards, 12 yards, 28 yards, Patriots lose the game. Am I right to read it that way? No, I think that's absolutely 100% fantastic analysis because Tua Tungavailoa, you know, doesn't have a rocket arm. He's not Justin Herbert out there in terms of, you know, throwing 75-yard bombs on a rope, but he is highly accurate. He knows where to go with the ball. He has no problem... Uh, looking off his first option and taking what the defense gives him and allowing his playmakers to go out and be playmakers. Miles Gaskin against the Las Vegas Raiders last year took a three-yard pass and went 57 yards and made everybody on the defense look foolish. Now, granted, it's the Raiders. They look foolish anyways, but that's not the point. The point is he has the ability to do that. And oh, by the way, so does Jalen Waddell. So does Albert Wilson, which if you have forgotten about Albert Wilson, go check out the tape against him in the Chicago Bears a couple of seasons ago and just see what he did. He completely ruined that franchise for the entire season. <laughs> in one game they have some wiggle in their step and if they're able to get free and get open yeah that's where i could see this game actually becoming a higher scoring game is if they break free i agree it has to come down to the fundamentals for the new england patriots defense because once the miami dolphins playmakers get the ball if they get open and then they're allowed to get around that first defender it's going to be a problem for the patriots fill in the blank for me here the dolphins win this game if the dolphins win this game if they can contain Hunter Henry and Jonu Smith. 
Traditionally, the tight ends have been a problem for the Miami Dolphins, as have mobile quarterbacks. The Patriots, I believe, have taken the mobile quarterback option off that list for us. So thank you very much for that. (laughs) However, if Eric Rowe plays like he has been for the Miami Dolphins as a safety who covers and blankets those tight ends against anybody not named Darren Waller, I think the Miami Dolphins have a pretty good chance of going into Foxborough and winning this game. But if he plays like it is Darren Waller, that's a problem for the Miami Dolphins defense. Fill in the blank for me here. The thing about the Patriots that scares you most is what? The thing about the Patriots that scares me most is that they have something up their sleeve, like they (laughs) always seem to do, legal or otherwise, that we just have not accounted for. And that's kind of like saying, I don't know what I don't know. But there always seems to be something that Bill Belichick is able to exploit. And that helps the Patriots year after year after year. He is an amazing tactician. He's an amazing you know, student of the game. He understands the rules. He understands where that line is. He understands how to make formations legal when other teams might show up and make it an illegal formation and, and cancel out a play. He's very good at that. So the thing that scares me the most, Bill Belichick. I don't know if this is a question so much as a curiosity around the league. Now, the Dolphins had fans last year at home. Patriots had no fans at all last year. So I know that the crowd, in addition to just being opening day, is going to be full-throated just by virtue of being back. I'm not sure that that's going to negatively impact the Dolphins because they have played with fans recently. But I do wonder if it's going to uplift the Patriots. Are you worried about the reintroduction of fans at all for any reason? No, I mean, unless they, uh, unless you guys bust in a bunch of people from Philly and they start throwing batteries at our players yeah. or something like that. No, I, I'm not. And the reason I'm not is because if you look at the players for the Miami Dolphins, they all come from big schools. That's one of the things that they tend to do is they get from SEC. You got Alabama, you got Florida, you got these big programs, Miami that have you know they're 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 battle tested to go to a rival stadium that's got a bunch of crazy fans in it um, i do think it'll help the patriots more than it would hinder the miami yes. dolphins um you know and and maybe with a young quarterback who is still very young he only had nine games as a starter last year you know maybe it causes him to burn a timeout because he can't hear you know the play call or something along those lines coming in from the sidelines but other than that i don't think so they're all professionals um i I don't know that the fans on any team for any sport have that much influence especially in football i mean they're so far away from the field yes it looks good for tv and it's a good story but i'm not a believer that the fans make that much of a difference so what's your prediction Well, my prediction, look, unless you're the Detroit Lions, nobody talks about their team in a losing fashion opening week, right? Uh, This is a huge game for both teams. I I, I don't know who you guys play week two off the top of my head. So it's an AFC East thing, too. The Miami Dolphins play the Bills next week in our home opener. That's two really, really difficult games. And if you can't go 0-2 to start the season and have a realistic chance of winning your division, which means you're now fighting for that wild card going into week three. The Miami Dolphins, in my opinion, have a better chance of beating the Patriots on the road than beating the Bills at home because the Bills are that good right now. So for me, as a fan, as a homer, and just looking at this, I'm going to go with the Miami Dolphins. I actually have this game closer to about 29 to 17. I do think Tua finds a crease in that defense and exploits it. I think this defense is going to throw the kitchen sink at Mac Jones. I just... They have so many players, so many, you know, their the defensive backfield is so good. You can go one-on-one with anybody out there. Eric Rowe shuts down tight ends. Unless Mac Jones can find a running game or Mac Jones is a, a, you know has a defender fall down, I think he has a difficult time getting big chunk yardage. And it's the same thing that you were talking about for the Miami offense. I think it's going to be the same thing for the defense. This defense is battle-tested. They're good. They have the longest streak of turnovers of any team in the league right now at 17 or 18. They get the ball back to their offense. They put them in a good position to win. And I think ultimately that's going to be the deciding factor. Ricky quarterback going up against a very, very, very good defense. Well, I think I I hope that you're wrong. Rather, I hope you're very wrong. As a matter of fact, I usually am. Yeah. (laughs) Sam Marcoux from the Perfectville podcast. You can check it out. Apple podcast, Spotify, and wherever you get your podcasts. They are part of the Believe Podcast Network as well. Sam, I won't wish you luck this week, but best of luck week two. I'd like you to be Buffalo. Yeah, uh, we'll we'll take care of Buffalo hopefully, and uh, you know just just make sure that you don't sleep on the Jets. You, you can sleep with one eye open with the Jets, but don't sleep completely on the Jets. And go ahead and beat them for us too. Well, we will try to do just that. So, Sam, we appreciate it. Episode one in the books behind enemy lines here. So uh, we will talk to you again down the road.